I'm hoping to learn the virtue of brevity by bringing you a relatively short video of a quite short but very, very steep climb I did up to a television uh, mast in the village of Avonwen. It's a dead end, but you can see ahead of me uh, the mast sort of dominates this whole area up at Moiler Park. So, yeah, do enjoy the video. Good morning from the little village of Avonwen. Um, near Denby, uh, Denbyshire. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I did a climb called Sodom and I talked about racing a local fella, James, um, on my Garmin up it. Uh, and James sent me a message very kindly on Strava saying that, you know, I didn't sound like a knob, which was a relief, and that he was happy to see me sort of being motivated by his time. And he said, by the way, if you're interested, there's a stupid climb not far from there. And it's up to this mast. There you go. So that mast is just a, a radio tower, mobile phone maybe. Um, and this climb is not long, but it seems to be like 20% for a lot of the start. My dad is halfway up it now, so I'm just going to go and have a go. James said he had to push his bike up it, and that is, um, well, <laughs> that is worrying. Right, wish me luck. Why didn't I film my intro here? Absolutely beautiful. There's the climb proper. Nasty. So as you can see, the climb is about 1.5k and just under 200 metres of elevation. So it's only an average of about 13%. I say only. <laughs> Anyone who's ridden an average 13% climb knows full well just, just how hard that is as it digs in. Um, but as I said before, it's not really hard of the flavour of Colid or Bolgogreus or Melanocoid, uh, but it is seriously difficult. Um, it starts off super steep and if you are keeping an eye on the gradient there i think that's probably correct i think there's there's regular long stints of 18 to 23 percent um which is really tough and it doesn't help that still be in winter the road's wet i know i bang on about this but it means you can't get out the saddle um or actually i did i got out the saddle quite a lot and I got wheel spin here and there. And on the analysis, you can actually see um, the parts where I've slowed down because my wheels spun out 36%. That doesn't sound particularly believable to me, but uh, all I know is I'm doing about six watts per kilo there and I'm going at seven kilometers an hour. So I'll leave you guys to decide <laughs> the validity of that gradient. I am on my heavier bike, but still, um, I was really relieved to see this slight respite and I think it probably comes in the in the brand of 10 to 15 percent respite. I don't know what I was saying there um, and I'm having to pick my line quite carefully so I don't know what I was um, not focusing on maybe I was talking about wheel spin. Uh, the road's not actually terrible and I think in in summer it would be much better but it is gravelly it is loose um and if you just look in the picture in picture look at the rear view camera there i think that really does give a a good scale of gradient um you climb so much so quickly here i really just wanted to give all the effort i could uh, and see what i could achieve i was just talking about there's military access on the right uh, and at the top of here this path carries on by the way you just need a mountain bike or a gravel bike or, or to walk, <laughs> if, that's, if that's your thing. You can hike a long way uh, down the Cluids. There's Offa's Dyke Path, which is a trail that goes the length of Wales, uh, goes along here. And there's all sorts of other trails that come out like along London Bridge and Moyle Arthur, which I've done recently. So there's lots of nice link ups to, well, to previous climbs I've done, if you're interested in watching those videos, but just generally to explore the area, very pretty. I think you'll be able to tell from my shadow whether I'm in or out with a saddle for those of you who are particularly bothered, but I was up and down um, pretty much constantly along this climb. I'm sorry that the low sun ahead, actually I don't think the sun is that low, I think it's just that I'm at such an angle that my camera is pointing straight at the sky. Bloody steep this climb. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I think you'll be able to see if I'm in or out with the saddle at times, but I was up and down. Um, I wanted to be out of the saddle, 
but I was getting decent power out sitting down. You can see there's a good chunk of time that I'm turning out 400 to 430 watts. And for me, that's just over six watts per kilo. And given that this climb is gonna be seven to eight minutes, depending on how I do, I've never done six watts per kilo for that long. I've I've never quite managed six watts per kilo for five minutes. It's always like 5.99 watts per kilo for five minutes or, or something. Um, so that waffling uh, was to give you a feel for quite how at my limit I am here. This is really like moving into power territory that I'm not sure I'm capable of in any way on my best day under best conditions, let alone uh, sort of now. I woke up the morning of this effort with a sore throat and Rhiannon had a cold and I was really worried that maybe I'd, I'd caught that. Um, and I started to taste blood about here in this climb. And I'm filming this the next day, recording this the next day, and the colds never materialised, so I think it was just me being silly. But I was definitely, definitely blowing, regardless. As you can see, the road surface has got a lot worse at this point, and it's stupid steep, and I nearly blew up. Right here, I thought, I can't keep doing this, but I can't keep the bike upright unless I keep doing it. Um, and I almost quit. I genuinely, I genuinely thought I've gone too hard too early. And I can't sustain this anymore. I could see my dad up ahead. Um, just about, I could see his rear light. Uh, and um, in the nicest possible way, chasing my dad down was keeping me going. Um, he'd asked for us to do less steep stuff at the moment because he wasn't feeling up to it. And I asked if he was going to bother with this climb at all or if he'd wait to the bottom. And he said, oh, well, I'll just give it a go and I'll see if I get up it or not. And I thought, you, 31-year-old Nick, cannot say we're going to do this climb. Your dad says, I don't know if I'll make it up. And then there he is, happily spinning to the top and you quit and push your bike. Like, that would be shame of a lifetime, wouldn't it? So um, that kept me going. My power's dropped quite significantly here, as you can see. I just give myself a little treat, a little recovery at 290 to 300 watts. Yeah, what a treat on this. 8 to 10% false flat, because let's face it, for this climb, that's a false flat. Um, the views of the left's very nice of, of the Cluids. I wasn't taking that in in any capacity. I'm not sure I could even see at this point. There's a few bits in this where I don't pick a sensible line because I decide I would rather ride straight than smooth because uh, I don't want to make this climb last any longer than it has to. So I just pick a dead straight line and ride it through a load of shit and <laughs> get on with it. Um, as you guys probably know, this is my idea of fun. I I don't care how weird that sounds. This was one of the most fun climbs I've done in ages. And yeah, it's not as hard as a lot of the climbs I've done. It's not even as hard as um, Gwenant down by Flangochlen, which is probably the hardest climb that I could get to locally. But when you're doing these efforts, you're not thinking, oh, well, I've done other harder climbs or there's, there's harder things I could be doing. You're just thinking, God, I need to survive this. <laughs> There's me chatting to some some hikers. Uh, they were very friendly. They came and stopped for a chat with us at the top, actually, once we made it up there, and they were cyclists as well, so that was cool. I love just randomly chatting to people in the local lanes. They're probably thinking they want me to stop bothering them so they can enjoy the peace, but nope, there was no peace if you could hear me huffing and puffing behind them. Disgusting breathing noises. And I knew I was approaching the end at this point, and I don't think my dad did, so I made the real dick move of fully attacking him so that I beat him to the line, which is so me. At least I admitted it as I went past him. I said, what I'm doing is, is bang out of order. But there you go. It was an absolute delight doing this climb. I finished in seventh place on the leaderboard, top between Kieran and Bert. They're two great cyclists, and it's an honor to be with them. Power's pretty consistent, and I should say, I got a couple of power PBs, five to eight minutes, basically a power PB here. Me and my dad just admiring the view. It is lovely. Beautiful. I will film my outro. This is the top of the hill. We made some friends up the way. Very nice ladies out on a walk from nearby. The view is 
absolutely sensational. I'm trying to remember to get myself in it because I need a thumbnail. <laughs> um, and there's the, the mast behind us. We can't actually go up the mast road. It says private and I'm not, not going to be doing any trespass today. Um, sorry, Dad, I'll ask you again now if that's okay. Mm -hmm. What you thought of it. Well, the climb is difficult because it's basically a forest track uh, with a bit of hardcore under. Um, so you've got to be really careful the line you pick as you go. But 25% uh, ish places, but nothing where you were stood still. Yeah. I, th I thought that was a, a manageable challenge. Incredibly hard, but manageable. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. What did you do? You get any wheel spin? I got wheel no, spin. I had to sit down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I did the same. I'm I'm bad for like standing out of the saddle as long as I can. Mm. And then you wheel spin a few times, you think that was stupid. I'm like <laughs> yeah. like Icarus flying too close to the sun and I know it. <laughs> yeah. As you almost go over the bars. Yes. Yeah. There was a point where I thought I was gonna blow up at the end of the second really steep pitch. Because mm -hmm. I'd done four hundred plus the whole way up there and I knew that wasn't sustainable. But I thought if I blow up here. I can't go up it. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to be doing over thresholds. <laughs> There's no sort of no forgiving it. So yeah, I think I got um, seven eleven up there. I think the KOM is like six eleven. So it's mm -hmm. a fair bit down. But that's that's Tom Brazy. He's one of the Dial's team teammates. Oh, so. okay. I don't think there's any drafting going on. Up there. No, no. I actually I didn't make a point of this, but I took my water bottles off and leaned them against the telegraph pole at the bottom because I thought I'll have. Two kilos less. There's probably a dog weeing on them as we speak. <laughs> Chewing on it. Yeah. 